shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Be not afraid. I bring you good news that will be cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The angels appeared to the shepherds. They said, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. At that moment, the kingdom of God, the glory of God on high, stooped down to earth, and the angels between the two brought the message of peace. It's the message that Jesus came into this world to bring us peace. Now, the type of peace we're talking about here is more than just a, a warm, fuzzy feeling inside. It's more than the peace and quiet a mother gets when the children finally take a nap. This is the peace that is the reality of God coming into this world. It's the reality that God brings relationship to us. The peace that is being spoken of here is the presence of Jesus in our lives. Psalm 29 11 says, The Lord gives strength to his people, and the Lord blesses his people with peace. How ironic it is that at this time of Christmas, peace is often so hard to find. For many people, the holidays and Christmas time is the most depressing time of the year. Sometimes we're yearning for something, we're learning for something special, we're yearning for joy, we want something to come in and take our everyday life and transform it into something. And yet we wait, we try to find it in our parties, in our, our giving of presents, in our shopping, in that special meal, trying to do everything to make everything just right so that the magic of Christmas will come into our lives. The good news is that the peace of the Lord waits for us every day. Jesus came so that we can know him in our lives, to say, Jesus, come into my depression, come into the difficult of my life and come and bring peace. I would invite you, even if you sit here this morning, just to simply invite Jesus to come into your life and bring peace. Will you say this with me in your hearts? Lord Jesus, I receive your peace. Let the peace of Christ wash over me. The peace of knowing forgiveness, the peace of knowing I am at peace with God because I put my trust in him. Jesus said on his nap last night in this earth, before he was crucified, in John chapter 14, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and 
do not be afraid. I'd like us to take this peace theme just one step further and know that this peace that was not just between us and God, when the angels proclaimed peace on earth, they were proclaiming peace between people. That we are to find peace with one another. First of all, God wants us to have peace in our families. Can we know the peace that is promised in Ephesians when it says, For he himself is our peace. He made the two groups one and then just destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. And the, the passage goes on to say, He has put to death their hostility. Jesus came to give peace to, between us and God, but he also came to reconcile our relationships, our families are called to be made whole. We need to realize that peace is far more than the absence of conflict. Peace is meant to between, be between us also, vibrant, living, loving relationships. Are we seeking those relationships with each other and our families? Are we taking time to build those relationships? Are we putting the work in that it requires to build relationships with one another. Psalm 34, 14 says, Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Just as we pursue a relationship with God, we must pursue peace with each other. It's not an easy task. It means pursuing peace means we go after peace. In our families, for example, between parents and children, if something's not right, we take the time to speak to one another. We take time to meet together, to sit down together, to talk with one another, to pray with one another, to work out our problems. We come together to make peace. And the beauty of the body of Christ is that here we come together to make peace, not only with God, but peace with one another. And again, in the absence of conflict, just because we may not be yelling at each other, doesn't necessarily mean there's really peace between us. Peace is a living, vibrant relationship with God, a relationship with others that is full of love, where we truly become brothers and sisters together, joined and fitted together to the body of Christ, where there is real and lasting peace, and we work at it. We work at it by working through our conflicts. We work at it by coming together and talking through their, our issues and saying, let's make peace. The good news is that our hostility has been destroyed. The hostility between us and God has been destroyed. And the hostility between us and each other, Jesus has made the way that we can truly love one another. This then gives us the strength, gives us the authority, the power to go into this world and proclaim the message of peace. To tell others that Jesus has come because he brings peace into our lives. May we know the peace of the Lord today. During the rest of this Christmas season, every day, can we let us walk in the peace and the joy that comes with the presence of our Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, again, we welcome you to come here and bring peace. Lord, I lift up those to you that are troubled, that have fears, and I pray, Lord, bring peace. Lord, I pray for those who have not yet found you, and even right now they're saying, what's all this about? I pray that you would come and make you the beauty of your Pour out your love on the hearts that are thirsty, the hearts that are needy. Bring light where eyes have been blind. Let us see you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray for our congregation today. We pray that you would bind our hearts together, that you would bring lasting peace. Help us, Lord, to pursue peace, to do the hard work of being peacemakers. And Lord, prepare us to go into this world, to go into areas of conflict, Lord, to go where there is anything but peace and be your presence of peace in this world. We are thankful today because, Lord Jesus, you came. We are thankful because the angels proclaimed peace on the earth. 
Let us be your people of peace today. We pray.